In Hamiltonian mechanics, a canonical transformation is a change of canonical coordinates that preserves the form of Hamilton's equations. Although it might not preserve the Hamiltonian itself, this is sometimes known as form invariance. Canonical transformations are useful in their own right, and also form the basis for the Hamilton-Jacobi equations and Liouville's theorem. Since Lagrangian mechanics is based on generalized coordinates, transformations of the coordinates qq do not affect the form of Lagrange's equations and, hence, do not affect the form of Hamilton's equations if we simultaneously change the momentum by a Legendre transform into therefore. Coordinate transformations are a type of canonical transformation. However, the class of canonical transformations is much broader, since the old generalized coordinates, momenta and even time may be combined to form the new generalized coordinates and momenta. Canonical transformations that do not include the time explicitly are called restricted canonical transformations. For clarity, we restrict the presentation here to calculus and classical mechanics. Readers familiar with more advanced mathematics such as cotangent bundles, exterior derivatives and symplectic manifolds should read the related symplectomorphism article. However, a brief introduction to the modern mathematical description is included at the end of this article. Notation Boldface variables such as Q represent a list of n generalized coordinates that need not transform like a vector under rotation, e.g., a dot over a variable or list signifies the time derivative, e.g., the dot products notation between two lists of the same number of coordinates is a shorthand for the sum of the products of corresponding components e.g., the dot product maps the two coordinate lists into one variable representing a single numerical value. Direct approach. The functional form of Hamilton's equations is by definition. The transformed coordinates have analogous dynamics where k is a new Hamiltonian that must be determined. In general, a transformation does not preserve the form of Hamilton's equations. For time-independent transformations between and we may check if the transformation is restricted canonical, as follows. Since restricted transformations have no explicit time dependence, the time derivative of a new generalized coordinate qm is where, is the Poisson bracket. We also have the identity for the conjugate momentum pm if the transformation is canonical. These two must be equal, resulting in the equations. The analogous argument for the generalized momenta pm leads to two other sets of equations. These are the direct conditions to check whether a given transformation is canonical. Liouville's theorem. The direct conditions allow us to prove Liouville's theorem, which states that the volume in phase space is conserved under canonical transformations, i.e., by calculus. The latter integral must equal the former times the Jacobian J where the Jacobian is the determinant of the matrix of partial derivatives which we write as exploiting the division property of Jacobians yields eliminating the repeated variables gives application of the direct conditions above yields j equals 1. Generating function approach To guarantee a valid transformation between and we may resort to an indirect generating function approach. Both sets of variables must obey Hamilton's principle. One way for both variational integral equalities to be satisfied is to have Lagrangians are not unique. One can always multiply by a constant lambda and add a total time derivative dg, dt and yield the same equations of motion. In general, the scaling factor lambda is set equal to 1. Canonical transformations for which lambda 1 are called extended canonical transformations. dg, dt is kept, otherwise the problem would be rendered trivial and there would be not much freedom for the new canonical variables to differ from the old ones. Here g is a generating function of one old canonical coordinate, one new canonical coordinate and the time t. Thus, there are four basic types of generating functions, depending on the choice variables. As will be shown below, the generating function will define a transformation from old to new canonical coordinates.
and any such transformation is guaranteed to be canonical. Type 1 generating function The type 1 generating function G1 depends only on the old and new generalized coordinates to derive the implicit transformation. We expand the defining equation above since the new and old coordinates are each independent. The following two n plus 1 equations must hold these equations define the transformation as follows. The first set of n equations define relations between the new generalized coordinates q and the old canonical coordinates. Ideally, one can invert these relations to obtain formulae for each q k as a function of the old canonical coordinates. Substitution of these formulae for the q-coordinates into the second set of n equations yields analogous formulae for the new generalized momenta p. In terms of the old canonical coordinates, we then invert both sets of formulae to obtain the old canonical coordinates as functions of the new canonical coordinates. Substitution of the inverted formulae into the final equation yields a formula for k as a function of the new canonical coordinates. In practice, this procedure is easier than it sounds because the generating function is usually simple. For example, let this results in swapping the generalized coordinates for the momenta and vice versa and k equals h. This example illustrates how independent the coordinates and momenta are in the Hamiltonian formulation, they are equivalent variables. Type 2 generating function The type 2 generating function G2 depends only on the old generalized coordinates and the new generalized momenta where the terms represent a legendary transformation to change the right-hand side of the equation below. To derive the implicit transformation, we expand the defining equation above since the old coordinates and new momenta are each independent. The following two n plus 1 equations must hold these equations define the transformation as follows. The first set of n equations define relations between the new generalized momenta p and the old canonical coordinates. Ideally, one can invert these relations to obtain formulae for each p k as a function of the old canonical coordinates. Substitution of these formulae for the p-coordinates into the second set of n equations yields analogous formulae for the new generalized coordinates, q in terms of the old canonical coordinates. We then invert both sets of formulae to obtain the old canonical coordinates as functions of the new canonical coordinates. Substitution of the inverted formulae into the final equation yields a formula for k as a function of the new canonical coordinates. In practice, this procedure is easier than it sounds because the generating function is usually simple. For example, let where g is a set of n functions. This results in a point transformation of the generalized coordinates type 3 generating function The type 3 generating function G3 depends only on the old generalized momenta and the new generalized coordinates where the terms represent a legendary transformation to change the left-hand side of the equation below. To derive the implicit transformation, we expand the defining equation above since the new and old coordinates are each independent. The following two n plus 1 equations must hold these equations define the transformation as follows. The first set of n equations define relations between the new generalized coordinates q and the old canonical coordinates. Ideally, one can invert these relations to obtain formulae for each q k as a function of the old canonical coordinates. Substitution of these formulae for the q-coordinates into the second set of n equations yields analogous formulae for the new generalized momenta p. In terms of the old canonical coordinates, we then invert both sets of formulae to obtain the old canonical coordinates as functions of the new canonical coordinates. Substitution of the inverted formulae into the final equation yields a formula for k as a function of the new canonical coordinates. In practice, this procedure is easier than it sounds because the generating function is usually simple.
Type 4 generating function The type 4 generating function depends only on the old and new generalized momenta where the terms represent a legendre transformation to change both sides of the equation below. To derive the implicit transformation, we expand the defining equation above since the new and old coordinates are each independent. The following two n plus 1 equations must hold these equations define the transformation as follows. The first set of n equations define relations between the new generalized momenta p and the old canonical coordinates. Ideally, one can invert these relations to obtain formulae for each pk as a function of the old canonical coordinates. Substitution of these formulae for the p-coordinates into the second set of n equations yields analogous formulae for the new generalized coordinates, q in terms of the old canonical coordinates. We then invert both sets of formulae to obtain the old canonical coordinates as functions of the new canonical coordinates. Substitution of the inverted formulae into the final equation yields a formula for k as a function of the new canonical coordinates. Motion as a canonical transformation. Motion itself is a canonical transformation. If and then Hamilton's principle is automatically satisfied since a valid trajectory should always satisfy Hamilton's principle, regardless of the endpoints. Modern mathematical description. In mathematical terms, canonical coordinates are any coordinates on the phase space of the system that allow the canonical one form to be written as up to a total differential. The change of variable between one set of canonical coordinates and another is a canonical transformation. The index of the generalized coordinates Q is written here as a superscript. The superscript conveys the contravariant transformation properties of the generalized coordinates, and does not mean that the coordinate is being raised to a power. Further details may be found at the Symplectomorphism article. History The first major application of the canonical transformation was in 1846 by Charles de Lunay in the study of the Earth-Moon-Sun system. This work resulted in the publication of a pair of large volumes as memoirs by the French Academy of Sciences in 1860 and 1867.